was what was it hydrogen lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine sodium magnesium aluminium silicon potassium no not potassium phosphorus sulfur chlorine potassium calcium and after that came chromium titanium manganese iron cobalt nickel and then other stuff so his law was valid only for these three things these this this and after calcium this does not come so it was only this much this much this much and this much so he could find only these few groups the other things did not match with the properties because chromium does not uh, resemble boron and aluminium titanium does not re resemble carbon and silicon manganese does not resemble uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and obviously you can see cobalt and nickel do not resemble hydrogen fluorine and chlorine all these three are non metals these are metals so although he tried putting those things in uh, uh, adjusting them in the same slot so that they could uh, they, they their properties could match those of their other group members but unfortunately he did not succeed so his law was valid only till calcium now the second disadvantage was that as time passed more and more elements were discovered but they did not match with the law i mean i told you there were 114 elements discovered till now so and newland made only 56 so after 56 the 57th till the 114th element they did not match with newland's law of octaves i mean chromium and titanium only don't match with them so how can you expect after thorium 57th and 58th element to match so that was another major disadvantage of newland's law that after more and more elements were discovered they did not fit into the table made by newland i am writing the third disadvantage over here the thing was that he tried to adjust copper and nickel in the same slot as i said but they did not match their properties did not match with the other group members because hydrogen fluorine chlorine they are all non metals copper and nickel are metals and moreover copper and nickel they resemble iron in many ways but iron has been placed far away from them uh, sorry sorry these are this is not copper this is cobalt i'm so sorry so cobalt and nickel they are magnetic they are attracted to magnets like iron so they resemble iron in many properties but they are placed so much so far away from iron in their uh, in the newland's law so that is why again um copper and uh, this this was another disadvantage of newland's law of octaves so there are three main disadvantage one was that it was valid only till calcium and the second was that as more and more elements were discovered they did not match with the law of uh, no newland's law of octaves and the third disadvantage was that copper and nickel were placed in the same slot i mean and there are other examples also they were placed in the same slot but they did not match with the uh, other group members rather the metal or the element with whom the properties of these elements match 
were placed far away from them. So Newland could not actually try to make a perfect periodic table. But it was another a very good attempt to make the periodic table. Now from Newland's law of octaves, there can be simple questions like First of all, they can be explain the disadvantages. So just write the three disadvantages. Then they can be fill in the blank type of questions. So in Newland's law of octaves, you need to, okay, one very important thing you, for your syllabus, you need to remember any periodic table. I mean, this was Newland's, even the modern periodic table, you need to remember only up till calcium. After calcium, you don't have to remember any element. It's okay if you don't remember any element after calcium. But till calcium, you need to remember the names of all elements. So, the question can be in the form of fill in the blanks. Like this is a Newland's law of octaves. So, this is one group. You call, okay. Let me first explain to you what a group and a period means. When you have a table, be it the periodic table or the Newland's law of octaves, Newland's octave table, there are rows and columns. So, these are the rows and these are the columns. Now, in the periodic table or the Newton's, uh, in, uh, what am I saying? New, not Newton, Newland's. Newland's law of octaves, the rows are known as periods and the columns are known as groups. So basically this is one period, this is, so this is the first period, this is the second period, this whole thing and this is the first group, this is the second group and so on. So you had seven groups in Newland's law of octaves. So, you remember? So, there were repetition after seven elements. So, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups. So, they might ask you, they might give you a group. Hydrogen, fluorine, dash, lithium, sodium, potassium, beryllium, dash, calcium, like this, suppose. This is a part of Newland's law of octaves. So, this, uh, they have given you a part of Newland's law of octaves. You just have to fill two blanks. So, you have to remember the table of Newland's octaves up till calcium. So, when you remember, if you remember, after hydrogen fluorine, there was chlorine. And after beryllium, there was magnesium and calcium. To remember, you can try using mnemonics. Uh, mnemonics are basically um, ways to remember a group or a period. Like, just giving, a, giving an example, um, suppose lithium, sodium and potassium. So, you can remember it, remember it as LINAC. Or whatever makes sense to you, you remember it as that. No one is stopping you. It's fine. 
whatever uh, you just need to remember it you can use any mnemonic you want there are good mnemonics in the modern modern periodic table i'll give you those mnemonics but you can use any mnemonic you want we had a great time inventing mnemonics in our days